lovelies. So today I was inspired by a video. I get videos every once in a while and you guys ask me to watch your videos. And I do watch them just because I'm that kind of person. But I got a message from a girl named Marcy Prester and oh god, I just wanted to hate her so badly. She is like, first of all, she's like the cutest person ever. And then she's just like naturally beautiful, like effortlessly. Also ageless. Like I'm adding up numbers and I'm like, you look like you're 17 because your skin is flawless. I hate you. So I'm kidding. She's just the sweetest person. And I fell in love with her from her first video that she asked me to watch. And she's just awesome. Like she's just such a cool person. And really real, really honest, and she has an adorable dog. And like, those are like the only three things that I need in an online friend, which she doesn't know this yet, but we're gonna become online friends. But I would just love if you guys would go and support her and she's really open, she's looking for a community. I like totally am not, this video is not about this, but I just like am obsessed with, I'm like fangirling over her right now, okay? <laughs> I'm just like having a blast with myself right now. Uh, but she is RA and so she really wants to have a group of friends that deal with chronic illness and I know that my gals will hook her up. Which she inspired me um, to kind of do like a bit of a goofy video and I understand for a lot of people this is not going to be goofy for you. But y'all know, painful hilarity, I have to make something humorous out of something that is painful. And I'm going to do my diagnosis story, which I have literally been telling you I'm going to do since like the beginning of 2015. She just recently told a story about seeing a new doctor and first of all, terrifying. Uh, second of all, it, for everyone seeing a new doctor, it's terrifying. Um, but I, it's been long enough that this particular doctor, I can look back at it and laugh now. So this is why I'm telling the story. This is why it's funny to me. This is why it makes me laugh. So please in no way take this as if this happened to me yesterday, would I be laughing about it? Because I did not laugh about this story for like years. <laughs> I probably still might get a little angry during this. So I went through about two years for my diagnosis, which is a long time, but they didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't, I didn't know what fibro was. I'd never heard of it. Um, so I went through about a year or so, a year and a half, that's why I say two years, of testing for everything. Limes, uh, RA, um, just everything in the book like I mean they took enough blood out of me to start a freaking blood bank and I remember this because I was was I say was because I'm getting a little bit better <laughs> but at the time I would hysterically cry when I got my blood taken which was so embarrassing but uh yeah so they did every book because it's you know they have to, for fibro it's kind of like um why do I, I want to say inclusion but it's the opposite of that um, disclusion. Uh, so it was like, uh, you know, you have to get rid of everything else and make sure it's not everything else. And then I got a referral to a rheumatologist. Let me tell you what I think of rheumatologists. <laughs> okay, this is one guy, but it was so traumatizing that I just never, ever, ever in my life want to go back to a rheumatologist ever in my life. I know I'm going to have to, but it was so awful. And I just picture that every rheumatologist is like this. So I have appointment anxiety. It's part of my social anxiety. So I had my mom drive me because I was so sick at the time, obviously. But also she drives me now too because of my social anxiety because I'll just keep on canceling the appointment and then like redoing it. <laughs> um, so I went with my mom. She sits out in the thing because I'm like a big girl, you know. And I go back and what I did the night before with her 
well, before she went to bed because my parents go to bed at like 8. Um, I'm trying to talk really fast because this is a really long story. Okay, I swear I'm like not on like meth or anything. Uh, so I did this little stick drawing. I was like so proud of myself, guys, about this. I did, I'm like an adult when I'm doing this. I just want to let you know this is not like when I was seven years old or what have you. Because then it would make a lot more sense. But no. <laughs> I did a stick figure drawing of a person. And I started at my head. And I went down to my toes with what was going on with my body. Because I had literally no idea what was going on. And I wanted him to look at me as a whole person. I was sick of being treated for this and that and this. And it was just like, I feel like it, there has to be something like bigger that's like, not just like a constellation of these like 15 different symptoms like it doesn't make sense to me still have no idea what fibro is so I made this whole list and I literally like point to I put numbers on the stick figure and then each I would start at my head and go like one and then I would list all my head symptoms like my eyes would go blurry my visions change uh, I have a really dry mouth I have dry eyes I have migraines, I have cluster headaches, like, I mean, and then all the way down, all the way down. So, um, I was very proud of this. I put a lot of work into it. It was like two full pages, like front and back. Um, no, I don't know if it was, but I remember it was two, it might have been one page to front and back. Anyways, it was a lot. So I get in there so nervous and I said, I made this because I, I don't really have, well, I won't remember my symptoms. So I wrote them all down for you so that you can like clearly see them. Literally takes the paper like this and is like, oh, I like d nonchalantly, like, okay, that was a bit exaggerated. Okay. So let's get past the chucking of the paper that I focused on for quite some time while talking to him. And he started to ask me questions. I honestly don't remember the questions that he asked me uh, because to me, I didn't know what I was there for really. So I didn't particularly, they didn't mean anything to me. So we went to go into the physical exam and all of a sudden it was like, bring your daughter to work day. And he had several people come in um, to talk to me and uh, not really to talk to me. He just talked to them. He didn't really talk to me that much. Uh, I guess I was a pretty, like, in hindsight, I guess I was a pretty cut and dry fibro case. So that's why he had other people come in. But, uh, they had a new doctor that was there and he wanted them to come in. And, like, he left the room and she kind of was like, I'm really sorry that you're going through this. And I was like, thank you. Like, wow. She obviously knew he was, like, a dick. Um, but anyways, so then, still is not explaining anything to me. Like, he's pushing on my body in different parts. Some of them I want to punch him in the face. Some of them I'm like, I don't, there's nothing that I feel there. Like, what are, you're just poking me. Like, what's going on? Uh, and then he wanted, like, this intern to come in and watch what he was doing. Which, like, I'm totally up for, like, learning as long as I'm learning as well. But uh, he kind of left me out of the loop. So we sat down and uh, he said, this is like after the examination and everything, he sat me down and he said, you have fibromyalgia. And I was just like stunned because that's a really long word and it sounds very serious. And so I said, because this is how my family works, like my dad's motto is let's work the problem um i said well what do i do and he said there's no cure and i literally was just i couldn't even cry i was so stunned by that information and i said well there needs to be something that i can do and he said well you can walk around the block at this point let me remind you that will not let me remind you because I didn't tell you this. I've told you this in past videos, but this might be the first video. I was bed bound. So I had been really sick because I let it go for a really long time. I hadn't been eating. I was down to like 
98 pounds. Like, it was really awful. Um, and so I didn't, and I was in there by myself. So it was kind of like, huh? And I was like, I can't really, really walk. It's hard for me to walk from my bed to my shower. And he was like, have someone come with you. And I was like, well, my mom is 5'1". I'm 5'6". Like, you want me to go out on the pavement and walk around the block? I live in Pennsylvania, too. Like, it's not, like, the nicest climate there. And I was like, so pretty much if I pass out, I'm going to hit my head or I'm going to take my mom down with me. Like, can we, like, work up to that step? Like, this is a huge step for me. Like, this is, like being like to someone that's like overweight and sits on the couch all the time to be like yeah you should run a 5k like what no not happening so I and he's like yeah walk around the block and at that point I became there's only one other time I've become this angry because I don't tend to get angry I get upset so like I will get in and internally like I would never cry in front of him uh but I got so angry that he actually I think was catching on to how angry I was and said would you like to bring your mother in here because I stopped responding to him and I was I remember distinctly this is like the one thing I clearly remember from it I was staring at a particular place like floorboard in the wall because I was like you cannot punch this doctor Emily like you cannot punch him um so I said, yes. And so he went out and got my mom. And my mom was like a bit confused. And he said, you know, your daughter has fibromyalgia. And she said, oh, well, what can we do? Because <laughs> she's like the same thing. And he said, there's no cure. You, she can take a walk around the block. And she's like, huh? And I just sat there and like my blood was boiling. And she's looking at me like, uh, <laughs> I mean, because she knows when I get mad. And I was in between her and the doctor, so she kind of, like, leaned over and was talking to the doctor. And then she started to get angry with him because he, she was like, well, I kind of have looked into this disease, which I didn't know. And um, they said, like, sometimes, like, chiropractors or certain, like, vitamins or, you know, like, is there anything like that we can do? And he said, "Take you can take a walk around the block. He literally must have said it like 20 times to the point where my mom, who is the sweetest little like lady who just like is so nice, especially to doctors, was just like, we're leaving. And I was just like, okay, because I am going to punch this person. Because he just gave us this devastating news with no empathy or sympathy or any empathy at all um and then just proceeded to tell us there was no hope <laughs> like none whatsoever like not oh you can go see a physical therapist or like anything even if it's not scientifically proven like uh, we need to try something like what are you what is going on right now like walking around the block like i mean like if you would have been like light exercise like she can do some things in her room to build up nothing he just kept repeating and i'm not joking you every time my mom said something he said you can take a walk around the block and so now it's like a joke in our family when someone's like repeat like repeating themselves about something like a question they don't understand we're like take a walk around the block thing like, it was so awful and my mom got me out of there just in time because I probably would have punched him and that is very unlike me I mean you guys know me like I'm not like a violent person like at all but I was so like bl like blinded just by like the information that I just got and and not crying and just being so sick and so tired and that there's no cure, no hope, and that he wants to take me a walk around the block when it literally took all of my energy for my mom and the nurse to walk me into this room to sit down. Um, 
So that was my diagnosis story. Of course, there has been wonderful doctors after that and a lot of great treatment and options and all of these types of things. But that was my initial, you know, foray into actually being diagnosed by a rheumatologist with fibromyalgia. <laughs> And how he told me to take a walk around the block. So that was literally the two information he gave me was that I had fibro and then I needed to take a walk around the block. Boom. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys have had better stories. I would love to hear just even snippets of your diagnosis stories or really horrible doctor or traumatizing doctor experiences. Um, of course, I have many, many outweighing wonderful experiences with doctors, but... Um, yeah, she had, uh, she, Marcy had told a story about a, just an awful doctor that I just immediately was like, I have to tell everyone about my diagnosis story because it's so crazy that like people don't even believe me. And I'm like, no, it's true. It's true. Uh, so I miss you guys. I love you guys. I hope you're having a pain-free, stress-free day. Please, um, reach out to Marcy. I will again put her information down below watch her videos and send her love um and i love you guys so so much and i will see you guys soon Woo!